As many of you may know, I'm quite a connoisseur of coffee and other caffeinated drinks. However, there are those drinks that us mere peasants cannot even dream of. Why, you may ask, it's because these figurative el elixirs from heaven are fucking expensive. Today, we'll be looking at one such caffeinated drink. One which costs more than 800 US dollars per pound, or the cost equal to feed an entire village in India. You may ask, what is this drink? It's coffee. Anyway, hope you enjoy. These two cups of coffee look identical, but this one is $3, and this one is $75. Okay, that's like 25 times the amount. Now I'll stick with the $3 one, in fact, give me a $1 coffee. It does the job, so it's fine, I guess. Flash Coffee carries the Alita Geisha Green Tip Natural. The coffee got the highest bid at the Best of Panama Coffee Auction in 2018. Before we can taste it for ourselves, we visited Clatch's Roastery in Southern California to learn about... Yes, it's California. Where else could it be? Where else would, he, where else would people buy coffee this expensive? Of course, it's California. ...about their roasting process. The team samples new coffees every day. We'll try a hundred coffees to find one that we want to buy. We're really looking for something that's really good, that highlights the flavors that we want from that origin, from that region. Yeah, in all honesty, I actually believe they're going. Maybe the coffee's really good, but... Come on, 75 bucks for a tiny cup. Look at that, it's an espresso cup. That's not even a normal cup of coffee, that's an espresso cup. Oh wow, yeah that's excellent and that is like leaps and bounds ahead of what we just had before here. Or just any cup of coffee I've had, you know? Yeah, but thing is it's like, you know, cost versus, you know, quality I'd say. So, yeah, I, I'm quite sure this coffee tastes great. I'm not gonna take that away from them, but... Come on, you wanna spend 75 bucks for a coffee? Seriously. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is a little more citrusy. Mm -hmm. For day to day, I probably would still have like my regular coffees only. Yeah, that would be me. I, I would drink this if someone offers to buy me one. Yeah, then uh, I'm fine. Cool. $75. Yeah, cool, bro. Because like I can't buy this coffee. <laughs> relatable. Extremely relatable. Okay, they have on the video which says why this coffee costs $75 a cup. Yeah, this video apparently didn't explain much and it's apparently $103. Uh, how? Or maybe it's like a kilo of coffee that's $103. Anyway, I'll just move on to the next one. Ah yes, the process of making coffee. Oh, watching These this is quite relaxing. These two coffee look identical, but this one is $3. Uh, is it just a, is that gonna be like a recap of what I just saw? Not see it. And this one is $75. $75 for one cup of coffee. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So apparently it's not a recap, but still. Batch coffee carries the Alita Geisha Green Tip Natural. This coffee is sold for $803 per pound. Okay, per pound. How much is a pound? I'm not really used to... Imperial me measurements, okay, I'll check it out later. That's about $75 for an 8-ounce cup. The more expensive coffees are obviously it's supply and demand. Generally, there's small supply and a lot of people wanting to have some of the best coffees. That's basically everything in life. So normally around the world, each country will have an auction for the best coffees. The coffee got the highest bid at the Best of Panama Coffee Auction in 2018. Before we can taste it for ourselves, we visited Clatch's Roastery in Southern California to learn about their roasting process. The team samples new coffees every day. So I guess the tester gets paid a lot. Shit, I want to be a coffee tester. Try a hundred coffees to find one that we want to buy. So we're really looking for something that's really good that highlights the flavors that we want from that origin, from that region. You know, for Brazil, we want kind of a, a nice chocolatiness. From Colombia, we might want more of a citrus or sweetness. Uh, Maybe it's the poor person we're talking about. Don't they all taste the same? I know they're like slight variations, but isn't it negligible when you think about it in the grand scheme of things? Sometimes for some coffee from Ethiopia, we want with these fruit notes that are coming through. They're just wonderful. And, and berries and strawberries and, and stone fruit and peach coming through our coffee. And you can taste it. It's just amazing. <laughs> Okay, if this guy was was eating dinner with my grandma, he'd get bit slapped by her. You know old people, they're quite you know, picky on the rules and his slurping is off the table. Was there ever a time that 
there was like coffee on the table and everyone was kind of like, this is it. This is like a game changer. Oh yeah. That happened in Panama when I was a judge. I'm the elite and the one that went for $800. Everybody's like, oh my God, amazing coffee. It starts with sourcing beans, but once they arrive, we have these green unroasted coffee beans. And that's the, the seed or the bean at the center of the coffee cherry. And we bring those in, we weigh them out, we roast them. So during the roasting process, when we add them to the roaster, we manipulate both the heat, the flame, and the airflow. So it's kind of a combination of conduction and convection to manipulate the roast to where it's just right. I want to nice, nice. Really, really, really impressive. Just right. We drop it into the cooling tray where a vacuum of air sucks on it, cools it down quickly. From there, it goes up, we de stoner, and it removes if there's any foreign objects in there, which there shouldn't be, but just to make sure everything's good. Yeah, and despite what people think, you know, foreign objects inside agricultural products is pretty common. So it's good that they're taking this step. Then, of course, we package it and we weigh it. So it happens both by hand or with the machines. They actually weigh it for us, seal it up, and we ship it all over. And now, the fun part. But somebody, uh, someone, someone buy me one of these cups, or one of these sacks of coffee. You know, poor old me. I need coffee to stay awake, even though I'm an insomniac, which most of you know, but... Please. So Joe and I are at Clatch Coffee. And actually, when you look at it, you can clearly see the difference. The $75 coffee, like, in my, my first glance, I didn't notice it, but the $75 coffee seems to look more rich than the $3 one. Coffee, and we have two different types of coffee with us. We both have a regular cup of coffee, and we have the world's most expensive coffee. I feel like for this... No, the funny thing is, I thought the world's most expensive coffee was the one that was shared, that, you know, you first feed the silhouette and it shits it out. I didn't know... It was this one, so we learned something new every day, don't we? I'm already kind of like smelling and get a little bit of the aroma. It smells like citrusy, but it yeah. smells kind of sweet. We learned how to smell coffee earlier. We are so. coffee experts now. Definitely more of like a coffee that I would have every day. Yeah. The flavor's not too strong. It tastes like regular coffee, a little earthier. Some so the $75 one's like bagu beef. It's pretty good, but you can't have it every day. and. Three dollar ones like something you'll have like once uh, once in three days. Flavors right. you can expect from the Elita Geisha range from berry, citrus, mango, papaya, and peach. Oh wow. Peach sounds yeah, that's interesting. excellent and that is like leaps and bounds ahead of what we just had before here. For just any cup of coffee I've had, you know. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is a little more citrusy mm -hmm. than this cup. Wow. I would love to have this more. It's a little out of my price range. It's probably about $71. But it's excellent. I love it. I'd love for more people to try it. My wife drinks coffee. I know she would love this too. For day to day, I probably would still have like my regular coffees only because like I can't buy this coffee <laughs> all the time. But I. Yeah, when you actually think about it, it's not just buying too much of the good stuff, actually makes it kind of makes it suck, okay? So, yeah. I think this would be such an awesome gift to give to someone who's like a coffee fanatic. I think people. Yes. Yes. So send me one, please. People really get this for that experience. Not much to like, you know, chug it down every day. Not everything that we carry is just the highest, most expensive coffee. What I really try to do as a buyer is to find value for my customers. You know, I want to find a great coffee because not everybody can afford to have, you know, top shelf every single day. But they all deserve something good. And that's what I try to find. But it's nice to treat yourself once in a while to that rare, exotic, wonderful treat. He has a point. Because even the best, highest, most expensive coffee in the world, you know, granted per cup, we might be selling for $75. But it's a once in a lifetime kind of treat. And that's what we try to bring. It's a once in a lifetime because it's $75 per cup. But yeah, I get his point. I guess that's it. What do you guys think about my new model? Anyway, if you like this video, how about giving me a like? Also, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Thank you and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.